If you're anything like me, you were probably caught off guard by the change to Black Cat, which I think is a pretty damn interesting change. As a 3-7, she wasn't quite worth the risk, but as a 4-9, now the risk is even greater, but so is the reward. So naturally, you find yourself trying to see if Black Cat can fit into a couple decks. Now, I did experiment with like Tribunal and Hella, but the thing I found was those decks were kind of so tight in their design already that Black Cat kind of didn't fit all that well. It kind of fit in Hella Tribunal. It's like you were cutting a really good card you didn't want to cut anyways, so... Black Cat was kind of in this weird spot, and I said, okay, well, what if we design something wholly new, completely new, right? And so I came up with two completely new decks, and I called them Surprise Value and Surprise Movement, and they have different kind of um, ideas behind how the deck is designed. So let's actually talk about them. I really liked Surprise Value. It surprised me, no pun intended, with how well it performed. And ironically, it has literally three of the buff cards in this deck, which is kind of funny. So I got to you know, hit three birds with one stone, one might say. But anyways, the way this deck worked is you have the Ghost Rider package, and of course it's Ghost Rider and Black Cat. Now, because it has multiple four drops, some might say, well, what if you had Zabu? But Zabu's not really worth it because you're not playing Black Cat, it's being discarded. But what I'll tell you is the main package here is Ghost Rider, Black Cat, Lady Sif, and Death, because with Lady Sif and Death being an eight cost, well, you got yourself a hit there, almost guaranteed. Now, of course you're going to draw Chavez on six, but if you Lady Sif Odin, there's a chance when you Ghost Rider, if you've discarded Black Cat, that you'll Ghost Rider the Odin and then Ghost Rider again because of the Odin effect. That's really niche and really combo-centric, but it's a possibility. You have Lizard Enchantress, so you have good tech, good power, good stats. Everything's about stats and tech. You have the Polaris for good stats, but also to counter the Galactus decks you're seeing. And of course, Shadow King for the Shuri's, which are very popular, and uh, the Destroy Base decks. Overall, this deck revolved around high power. It performed well. I actually liked it. I feel like we're onto something pretty unique here, especially since like the meta is really revolving around Galactus and Eliath and, and things like that. And you, you get some versatility with this deck. And again, it's hard to compete with the straight up stats that's being put up. So I did like surprise value. We also used surprise movement. The idea was having a similar shell that's less greedy. So we got rid of the Odin, but we still have Black Cat Death, and we still run Sif and Ghost Rider. Essentially, what we have here is the uh, Silky Smooth style deck with Craven and Silk. You have the Nightcrawler in there as well, Polaris, Spider-Man. It's it's all the value stuff you'd expect with Morales. Now, I love the idea of Magneto as a closer into the Craven location where you do all the disruption, or Magneto just to disrupt in general. This deck felt pretty damn good as well. Like it just felt decent. Like it just felt good. It felt like a good deck. But I do think there's going to be some room for improvement. But I wanted to show you the bruise in progress because I think it's cool to like experiment and come up with some new ideas around how you can use these new cards. So this is what I came up with. I'm sure you might be able to come up with something better. But as you're going to see in these gameplay highlights, I do think that these decks have potential. But the premise of using Ghost Rider with Black Cat did seem pretty playable, honestly. It didn't seem that far-fetched. And I was able to pull off meaningful combos more often than I expected. Black Cat's gone. Discarded. Okay, not great for us here. Lizard into a Central Park game feels bad, but here we are. We do have the Odin. Oh, this is interesting. Now we want Polaris's. Polaris is being teched. Oh, Skillmongers. What a gamer. We're against a destroy play. The death is two cost now. There's no way he's expecting me to play. Uh, this is a beautiful Killmonger, actually. Much respect. Much respects. Um, he, there's no way he thinks we have death. I'll tell you that right now. Also, why the hell did I play Polaris on a lizard location? Am I drunk? Do I have any idea what's happening right now? We played Chava's death. I think we just put as much points on the board as we can. I think we put this here and we do this. I want to put power everywhere. I'm going to snap. There's no way they're... Ex they snap back. Okay. There's no friggin' chance they're expecting me to have death in this deck. And they shouldn't be running Shang-Chi in their list. I love their variants. They have awesome variants. There's their death. And Venom. It's a good value play. Said, Let's 
Let's play to beat Arnim Zola. Now we bounce the silk, unfortunately. But I think we win. Where does Bub go? We win. No way he thought I had death. Let's go, eight cubes! We gotta be careful with Silk. Black Cat's gone. Interesting. Magics, does he? I think we ghost here. Hmm. This is tricky with the raptors, right? We kind of run out of space to utilize the silk effectively. Really wish it was a... Up, like, it bothers me it's face down. It's Invisible Woman. So this is a uh, Tribunal deck. I think we Odin on top of Polaris, drag the Raptor, and it prevents him from playing Hela. And now we should just win. And he's trying to figure out like what I have. And we got the win. That's awesome. Few cards have fallen from grace as quickly as Spider-Ham. As a one drop that hit the most expensive card in your opponent's hand, it was absolutely insane. We identified pretty quickly it was gonna be a toxic card and uh, it was, it was absolutely infuriating to play against. And so naturally they nerfed it to a two drop that had the same effect and it was still pretty damn good. And then they nerfed it so it only hit the leftmost card in your hand at two cost. And it was just awful, unplayable garbage. And a week later, they changed to a 1-1. And so I thought to myself, is the card dead or does it have a chance? And so what's the only deck that really cares about a 1-1 that hits the leftmost card with this leech style effect? And it's definitely Lockjaw, right? It's this Janejaw style deck because... Like, traditional Janejaw often wanted to play, like, an Iceman or something just to get that cycle going. It's what makes the Thanos play so valuable. But, like... It just still didn't feel good. Spider-Ham felt not great. I mean, sometimes it was nice, like, you, so you hit your their Doctor Doom anyways, that's cool, or you hit a Patriot instead, and then, like, okay, that's something, right? The effect is still disruptive, but it's just not as good as it was before, and it just kind of felt bad. Like, the deck felt okay, I won games, it was fine, like, you're gonna rank with it and everything, but... It just didn't feel good. Spider-Ham did not feel great into Lockjaw the way you'd hope it would, right? And so... Yeah, like, Spider-Ham didn't feel great. It just didn't. And so I think this card, while having... It was overpowered at one point. Not even overpowered. I think it just pissed everyone off, right? And now it's definitely undertuned. In this deck, it works, but it's not great. And you know what? I think that's okay. It's one of those cards that has a very polarizing effect. And we don't want to rip too much fun out of Marvel Snap, right? It's not even really a tech card. It was just a piss-off card, right? Now it's definitely not a tech card. So regardless, there's a gameplay highlight I hear I have here of me playing this deck, experimenting with the Spider-Ham. And yeah, like it was fine. But at the end of the day, I think the days of Spider-Ham being a menace to society in Marvel Snap is probably behind us. It might see some fringe play. The card does not feel good. This is cheeky. So they're going to Viper this over? That's like the new Fancy Pants play? Yeah, they're going to Viper this over? Yeah. Because they want to play Elioth, right? Which is fine. Doesn't really matter. It's a very... Uh, I think that's, that's too cute, honestly. For me, it's just too cute. Easy.
Imagine you could see the card Iron Lad's playing. Wow. Top decks the Eliath. What a damn joke that was. So we get Chavez, which means we can roll the... Uh, If we hit Odin, if we 50-50 Odin, we just win. Right? So we don't actually play there. We 50-50 the Odin. It's 50-50. Odin. Let's go! You love to see it. You absolutely love to see it. Always believe in the heart of the cards. Victory. You're not getting me with that Eliath gameplay. I'm all over it. I'm all over it. Collector got nerfed, so a lot of people were saying, well, obviously Collector was attacking the Loki-style decks because Loki was extremely strong, and, well, does it take a few percentage points off of Loki? Well, yes, it will. Two powers, two power, and naturally the deck becomes weaker. The thing I don't love about the change to Collector is it pretty much murdered every single deck that isn't Loki. I experimented with Devil Dinosaur. I experimented with, like, uh, like kind of Discard Swarm Collector, which was kind of an archetype. And they're all awful. Like, it feels so, so bad. Collector's completely unplayable in those. It's really only playable in this one specific archetype, which is Loki. Which is kind of sad. You don't want to see a card die like that. But to answer your question, is Loki still good? Then, yeah, Loki never got touched. And the Collector is still good, too. Uh, with all this generation, and even with Loki itself, like, Collector is just disproportionately getting so much benefit from these style of decks. Like, it's kind of wild what happens so yeah collector's fine yeah the loki decks are technically weaker but they're still absolutely fine which you're going to see in these gameplay highlights like if you're still able to get a nerfed collector which is down by two power up till nine very consistently that's a two nine like the only card that trades like that is mobius under most circumstances or morbius i should say i'm already mixing up the two but like collector collector seriously it's not even an ongoing card it has a 2-9 stat line very regularly with Loki, that's kind of crazy. And you're going to see in these gameplay highlights that, yes, Collector's A-OK, -okay, and Loki's just fine as well. The deck is still fantastic. Cloning Vats? Oh my gosh. Cloning Vats, Collector, and Kitty Pride gameplay. This is ridiculous. This feels like an unfair Collector game already. Okay, they play Wasp into Cloning Vats? This just in. Oh, because it's Patriot? Damn, we're at six? That, that daily bungle just completely screwed me. Because now I'm going to overfill my hand. I can't go, I can't go completely buck wild here. I could steal the, uh, the wasp. Let's do this. Six. Throws down the iron lead. Pulls armor. Nice, that's a fast effect. Okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, this is literally as good as Loki's gonna get. Cloning Vats, these like this. Right? They pop, they pop, they stick. Boom, boom, boom. Switch. We just add 7 power. Yeah, this is the way to do it. Yeah, Kitty can't be discounted to 1 with Quinjet, to 0 with Quinjet. That is so perfect. Look at these collectors. Oh, the fast forward. You robbed us of the beauty. You son of a gun. Look at these Chad collectors. Oh, they might have gotten something fun. We can play Loki again, though. That's kind of interesting. 
and they're gone. So here's the true test. Does the 2-0 low uh, collector still function here? We got Snow Guard, we got Kitty Pry, we have a really good starting... Oh, Subterranea. We, we don't have Loki, unfortunately. So now Subterranea kind of kills us a bit. It's unfortunate we get a really good starting hand and then it's Loki, it's a... Sorry, not Loki. It's Subterranea that kind of messes up our hand a little bit. Now we can play the Snow Guard into Subterranea if we want to be complete jackasses. Okay, there's Loki. I think we actually snow guard. I think this is interesting. I think we snow guard. We reproc subterranea. Now we it's it's what starts in his deck, right? So we're gonna snap. We've already snapped. So because we actually copy what the way his deck starts, I think the bear on top of subterranea into Loki will actually be soul crushing for him. Did he actually draw all his destroy pieces? It's a rock and carnage? Yeah, okay. I was gonna say, if he just drew like all his destroy pieces, I would've been so pissed. He had Angel. So it's Bear into Loki. We get rid of Kitty Pride, unfortunately. But we mess up his deck pretty hard. Now it's only one more draw. He already played one rock. He plays down three. Are these three rocks? Is this Venom? It's Forge. Interesting. Is this worth eight? Probably not, right? Did we just catch him for, oh my gosh, we win. <laughs> we just got him for eight cubes, that's ridiculous. In a subterranea, that's a wild game. Like, first of all, we both gambled on those eight cubes, but Collector's still sitting at a nine. It's still sitting at a nine. The, the snow card bear reproc subterranea and then we were able to zoo out a Thanos Bucky Barnes move Jeff. It's actually kind of crazy.